Hey, hi. I'm Chris at Chris, and welcome to So Cool Science. Science you can do right at home. I'm just checking out this Allosaurus fossil claw and going over to today's science file. And today's science file, it says, How do fossils form? Well, that's an awesome question. Try this. You will need a sponge, some scissors, some water, some salt, a container, and sand. Start by getting yourself a sponge. No, 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 the sea sponge. Put it down. There you go, because we're going to get ourselves one of these bad boys right here, a kitchen sponge. Boy, I got to clean up in there. <laughs> All right, here's what you're going to do. You're going to cut out a fossil shape on the sponge. By the way, if you happen to have this green stuff on your sponge like I do, this stuff peels off real easily, so just give it a pull. Now get yourself some salt. No, 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 not from the salt shaker. <laughs> I'm talking about from one of these big containers right here because you're going to need about 100 milliliters of salt. It's got to be way salty. Then you're going to mix in about 250 milliliters of water. <laughs> now get yourself about a liter of sand and you're going to pour your sand on top of your sponge fossil. Don't get it from a sandbox. It could have pee in it. Now place this in the sun for one whole week. Now check that out! The sponge is hard! Now that's so wicked cool! So why does the sponge become hard? And what does this have to do with fossilization? Well, don't look at me! Take a closer look at this. Fossil bones form when an animal, like a dinosaur, dies and sediment from a riverbed or volcanic ash covers the animal. While these bones sit buried under the water-saturated sediments, the tiny holes in the bones fill with water-soaked minerals from the sediment, just like how the sponge fills up with crystallized salt. This process, known as permineralization, takes thousands of years, turning bone into a rock replica of the original bone. The ancestor of all the dinosaurs was a small lizard-like animal that could stand and move upright about 245 million years ago. Around 235 million years ago, there was a split between dinosaurs that kept their right-angled pubis bone and dinosaurs that evolved a parallel pubis bone. This group gave rise to dinosaurs such as Eoraptor, Allosaurus, Crechosaurus, Archaeopteryx, and Tyrannosaurus. This group gave rise to dinosaurs such as Prosauropods, Platyosaurus, and Ardonyx, giving rise to the sauropods, such as Diplodocus, Apatosaurus, Camarasaurus, and Brachiosaurus. The parallel pubis bone dinosaurs began with the Genosaurus, one giving rise to the Stegosaurus and the Angliosaurus, the second giving rise to dinosaurs such as Iguanodon, Canthosaurus, Corythosaurus, while a third group gave rise to the Triceratops, Agathumus, as well as the Pachyosaurus. Humans and dinosaurs never lived at the same time. So now you know how fossils form. You know, making your own fossil right at home is why science is so cool. <laughs>